Mate, we've, um, yeah, we've got electrical issues. The first time that we realised we had trouble with the anchor, it actually completely shut down entirely one phase of the generator, uh, which meant we lost a lot of other auxiliary systems as well at the same time. That's pretty tragic because it meant we didn't have steering and we didn't have our exhaust fans and uh, it, it affected quite a lot of things. It may well be a simple thing like one of the transformers is playing up or something like that, but whatever it is, the short story is it's beyond my capabilities to diagnose. If we can't raise the anchor, we'll try and have to try and get someone here. If we want to save the Irish part of the expedition, we might have to sacrifice the rest of the French expedition. But we definitely want to save the Irish portion of the expedition. That's our best shot at a white shark, I think. The two main things we needed were a gasket and just a small piece of um, cooling water hose. So DJ went ashore and went to several different places and uh, eventually found someone. Thank you. So we got a piece of pipe, hose pipe, that should replace this and the people here were nice enough to give it to me for free. So awesome. We're going to try to pull the anchor now and hopefully we can get it up off the bottom and then we have to head straight to Brest. So we're in a tough spot. It sounds more normal than it has the whole time. Could it be that both of those breakers are on and the one breaker was bad? Because that means... This is about as fast as you guys were pulling it before. Okay. 90 on it faster than that. When we go to lift the anchor, of course, we have to be all ready to, uh, for the boat to go. And uh, we're all, you know, sort of waiting with bated breath and hit the pump and just gave a little bit of a but then it was bang, it was all up and good. And so, yeah, that was a big relief. Some sort of uh, different type of emotional experience here, arriving in Ireland. We've got a couple of days to rest and then we're gonna have a little time on the water before we have to leave. And we're gonna give it our best shot to try to crack the code on the Mediterranean white shark. Thanks, uh, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Thank you, guys. Your first time in a big boat? We only deal yeah. with happiness, leisure, and pleasure. <laughs> you brought happiness to this yeah. deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can right. use it. Come on forward here. The scenes are all from here and further in the inner harbour, but they're, they're spreading out now, so there's colonies here, here, here. There's some out in this rock out here, so that population is getting saturated. And even in the back of Bear Island, this is this is Ro Roan Carrig, which translates to seal, seal rock. So, you know, seal rock, seal bank, seal bank. Yeah, yeah, a lot of seals. We're in the, the southwestern tip of Ireland. Um, we're off, off of a county called Kerry, which is a stunning place. Just over to the, to the left of screen here, there's a huge seal colony. The water temperatures here are perfect. It would be amazing to you know, find the first record of a, of a white shark here. But to be honest, what I was more excited about was the opportunity of having this big, capable group of American scientists come to Ireland with this huge research platform that we could then use to bring together a team of local Irish shark scientists to have discussions and work together and, and form collaborations about sharks and rays in Ireland in general. It's been a really productive trip already, despite not having had a bite yet. Another cool thing that happened yesterday, was it was a pretty quiet day on the shark front, but we had a local fisherman, Mick Sheeran, who contacted us and said, hey look, I actually have a little friend with me in a box. Um, it's a Manx shearwater. The frequency of as far as I know, Brazil and Uruguay are down around that, that region for most of the year. But like the puffins, they come to the islands uh, to breed uh, during the summer period. The light pollution on the land distracted him, put him off his journey. He landed in the whiskey distillery in Dingo. <laughs> now, I hope he didn't go in, I don't think so. 
they get predated on then by the cats and the rats and the dogs and everything because they can't walk on a level surface. Their feet are so far back in their body. They act more like rudders because they're a seabird, they're at sea all their lives apart from when they're breeding here in the island. So they can't take off my level surface, so they're absolutely totally helpless. So um, there was a lot of them getting killed over the years, so we set up a rescue programme and uh, we bring them, put them in a box and we drive out to Slay Head at night and let them off from the cliff at night or from the boat like we did today. That's good, that's good. Face up around the, into the wind. That way, yeah, yeah. Push up and down a few times and then release them. One, two, three. Up. Take off from there. He'll take off from there. Or he'll probably take a little drink. He's in the natural element now. There's no danger of him. The longest lived ones that we're aware of is 52 years. So they start breeding late and they only have one chick. So it's very important. Every single bird that's, uh, that's saved is very important. We haven't found a white shark yet, but I mean, it's always going to be in looking for a needle in a bit of a haystack. To make new discoveries like this, you have to start somewhere. And so we're going to stick it out for the next three or four days. Depending on what happens at the end of that week, we'll reassess how we might approach this question and this mystery in the next few years. But I think it's been a really helpful few days, particularly for the American team to come and just see the environment here, see how it fishes and think about how we might be able to search for white sharks in the next few years but um, we're going to keep at it, we're going to persevere.